raising initial capital for your investment. Now, many times when we talk about initial capital, what people think about, what comes to mind and what comes to bear for you is money. Money. Some people, a poor man does not see any other thing as capital than money, cash at hand. Uh, you get what I'm saying? But there are a lot of things that are better than money that are capital for initial starter. I don't want to see anybody who is under the sound of my teaching ending this year without getting involved in one business or the other. I have told you financial independence is not possible working for money. Financial independence is not what possible working for money. You cannot have the financial liberty that you are. And I've told you that it is easier to serve God having financial liberty than serving God under financial yoke. If you are a salary earner, you are under a yoke. Are you get from saying? If you are a salary earner and the only thing you earn is salary and you live on a salary, you are operating under a yoke. You are unequally yoked to someone. Are you get from saying? So what it means is that you know yoked animals, they tie them together. Where one goes, where the principal goes, that is where the the subject goes. You can't detach yourself. So whatever your company tells you is what you do. If they tell you don't go to church on Sunday, it's natural you will be at work. You understand what I'm saying? So it's important that if you are talking about financial independence, financial liberty and wealth transfer, you must understand that you have to learn the concept of making your money to begin to work for you. At whatever level, no matter how little, you must begin to exercise what I call dominion, authority, and supremacy and sovereignty over finance. And you can begin to exercise it even if it is over, even if your total net worth is 10,000 naira. You can start operating as a, as a king over finance, over money. So we're talking about initial capital. In Exodus chapter 4, verse 2, the Bible says, And the Lord said unto him, What is that in thy hand? And he said, A rod, a rod. God was sending Moses to Egypt to deliver his children. And Moses was asking for initial capital. And, and he thought God was going to soak him in one oil and uh, for seven days and prepare him, fortify him, or give him one jar of oil. That this is your initial capital. But God said to him, what is in your hand? What is that in your hand? It, it implies that whatever you need to start a vision has come before the vision is battered. You already have it. He said, what is in your hand? Everything in your hand right now, your possession right now, is significant to where you are going. You must understand it. So when you take for granted what you have, you will be granted from getting what you don't have. What you wish to have. So your initial capital, I see, is what is in your hand. What is in your hand. And in verse 17 of Exodus chapter 4, it says, And thou shalt take this rod in thy hand, wherewith thou shalt do signs. Thou shalt take this rod in your hand and do signs with it. This rod in your hand, you will take it and you will do signs with it. Matthew chapter 10 verse 1. And when he had called his 12 disciples to him, he gave them power over unclean spirit to cast them out and to heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease. He gave them power, empowered them with the capital. So you need to understand that your number one initial capital for word creation is your God-given idea. Your God-given idea. Nobody came empty and dead. I used to say to people, 
I say to people, even if you wake up empty-handed, you, you should not wake up empty-minded. You see, people are not poor because they are empty-handed. They are simply poor because they are empty-minded. What is that in your hand? There is always something in your hand. Everyone created is created for a purpose. Is created and designed to fit into a, 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 a system. You are an answer to a problem. If God did not see a problem, he wouldn't have created you. So when God formed you in your mother's womb, he saw a problem on earth that you are sent to solve. Are you get what I'm saying? And the easiest way to generate wealth is to locate that problem and solve it. And you can't locate the problem until you discover your purpose. I said on Sunday, purpose is not a decision to make. It is a discovery. There are so many things that are out of your decision. Unfortunately, many times, we take decisions over the things we should discover. Life is more of discovery, not more of decision. Life is more of discovery. And it is easier to live in a discovery estate than a decision estate. You need to understand the way it functions. A lot of people are struggling in life today because they take decisions where they should make discoveries. They take decisions where they should make discovery. Discovery of why you are here. Even to marry, you must discover the man. Are you getting what I'm saying? You must discover the woman. The Bible says, henceforth we know no man after the flesh. Are you getting what I'm saying? So when your, when your life, you and your life cycles is influenced by the things you see on the physical realm, then you are limited to what God can do in the spiritual realm because the spiritual controls the physical. That was why Apostle Paul was writing in 1 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, he said, Why we look not at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen? For the things which are seen are, et are temporal, and the things which are not seen are eternal. For this cause we faint not, though our outward body perish, our inner man is daily renewed. Do you know it was what Job discovered about God and about himself that kept him alive even when his body decayed, his inner man. We have a lot of shallow Christians who are strong physically, but they are shallow in the inner man. They are shallow in the inner man. That is why you discover that even some pastors, you see their shallowness displayed in this pandemic. Even when government said you can return back to church, they said no, we can't return back to church. Are you getting what I'm saying? It tells you that all the things you see in the physical, they are just facade. I pity members who are under such pastors. So you must discover, make discovery. Make discovery. Some of you, you are already doing the things, but you don't take, you don't, you, you do not take cognizance of what you are doing as important. Do you know Genevieve, Jevenic rather, started by the roadside. The woman, they just discovered the woman can cook very well. Then she came, start, you know, start cooking and she discovered that every time she cooks, she returned home with empty bucket, empty pot, empty. Because people will lick it, people will buy. Then she began to discover, this is my area. This is my thing. Then she began to cook. She didn't let her certificate stop her from, from, from fulfilling her purpose. Sometimes your certificate is the enemy of your destiny. So discover why you are called. Why you are called. Why you are called. What you are called to do is far better and profitable than what you are trained to do. If your training does not align with your calling, you will be distracted in life. And that is why I say to people, before you get training, get sort out your calling. Ah, you get what I'm saying? So, 
So you see that in Job 22 verse 21 to 25, until we align with God's word and God's purpose for our lives, we may find it very difficult to fulfill destiny on time. He said, acquaint now yourself with him and be at peace. So when you discover purpose, the first thing you discover is peace. Acquaint now yourself, thyself with him. Align yourself with him. So let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable unto thee, O God. Align yourself. Align your, 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 your pursuit with his purpose. He said, align with me, company with me. And be at peace. Thereby good shall come to thee. Good shall come to thee. Good shall come to thee. Say so you will have good. Good talks about profit. Good talks about progress. Good talk about having result. Align yourself with what I created you for. If I created you to be, to be a great, what I call it, a great engineer, don't be carrying wig and going to court as a lawyer. If I created you to be a businessman, don't begin to pride yourself in the fact that you have PhD. Get, if I created you to be a farmer, a mechanized farmer, don't pride yourself in being a medical doctor. Align with me, then we can flow together. When you align with God's purpose, you don't need to pray for him to help you. Number two, gift and talent is a capital. Your gift and talent is an initial capital. Discovery is the initial capital. I don't care. If you don't discover what you are meant for, to do in life or become what God created you to, even if you have all the money in the world to pump into the business, it will fail. Check great business tycoons in the world. They started with small things. With, or lit, with little or nothing. And they became big. Amazon started in the, in the garage. Amazon. How many of you know Amazon? Amazon started in the garage. But today it's all over the world. The richest guy on earth today is Amazon's owner. The CEO of Amazon is the richest guy in the world today. He has never produced anything. Is he buys and sell. It is a middleman. So he discovered that I can be a middleman. I have gifted in negotiating deals, making, bringing the seller and the buyer together. It doesn't create anything. It doesn't produce anything. Now all the producers and the sellers that wants to be on a global space must have their product on Amazon. Discover your talent, develop your talent, and deploy your talent. Stop wasting your talent. Stop wasting your talent. If you are a witch, and the only thing you fly, you do in the night is fly in the night, you are wasting your talent. Create aircraft. That you discover that you can you can cut a banana leaf and stand on it and be in America on that one under on under on 30 minutes. And the only thing is to fly to go and do wickedness in the night. Why don't you develop, deploy that technology that wisdom to a technology? <laughs> At least move from witchcraft to aircraft. you do is to kill children. Why don't you use your craft to kill coronavirus? And say, I have discovered the cure for coronavirus. Praise God. Number <laughs> Nothing gives you room at the top like your gift. Proverbs 17 verse 8, a gift is as a precious stone in the eyes of him that had it. Whithersoever it turn it, it prospered. Look at that. Whithersoever it turn it, 
it prospered a gift. Whithersoever it turneth, it prospered. Whithersoever. Wherever you turn to with your gift, you accept, you gain acceptance, you gain relevance. They will create a seat for you in the front. I'm telling you, anywhere you turn to. Number three, your initial capital is not money, it's manpower. Manpower. Talking about self-development. Self-development. You say God gave you the vision to start a business and you do not have manpower. You are looking for who to help you. All your brothers and sisters gathered in December and called in the, at the center and said, what do you want to do? You said, you want to do business. The only thing they will give you is money. Then they gather, all of them gather and give you money. By December again, you have come back. They call you, are you not coming home for, for December? He said, I don't have transport. They have to gather money and send you transport to come to the village and we can come and tell us what is wrong with you. Then you begin to say, witches are, witches are, are pursuing you. Somebody is after you. Your stepmother. No! You lack manpower. You know what they call manpower? Self-development. The Bible talks about David as a skillful player of flute and harp. He was skillful in playing. He was not just a player. He was skillful. You don't, you are not created with skill. You develop skill in the area of your talent. So when you are talented and you are not skillful, you cannot be fruitful. There are so many talented guys outside there. The only reason why they are not fruitful is because they are not skillful. Skill. Messi, Leno Messi is a factor in Barcelona today. And for 20 years, almost 20 years, they have built every system around him. And he has won many trophies. They placed value on his skill and his buyout clause is 700 million pounds. Now he said, then he negotiated. Anytime I want to leave, I can leave on free transfer. They said, we agree. You are, see, because he's, he's skillful in what he does. Skillful. Along the other time, Tammy Abraham, they began to bench him and I asked, why are they bench him? He said, he's making a demand. Very, very terrible demand. Because they gave you once half a season to play. Making a demand that they should pay him this, they should pay him that. He said, the coach says, you. That you have not even been tested. They are saying they should pay you in, in the excess of 150,000 naira per week. Are you okay? So they benched him. But can you bench Messi? 500 naira, 500,000 pounds outside tax is what it takes every, every week. Anywhere, any club that buys him right now, now that he has issued a transfer warning, he didn't attend training today. You, you, then born you away. If you are not that skillful, they will deal with you. But they cannot deal with him. He told them he's not attending training. But do you know that any club that buys him, they will make their money in 24 hours. Because all the shirts, everything, they will sweep out the shirt of that club in one hour. He's a skillful player. He said, 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 15 says, study to show yourself approved. A workmanship, workmanship that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the world in truth. You see, God calls you, but self-development approves you. God calls you. See, you, you see a lot of mediocrity in the body of Christ today, and you wonder, you cannot engage a brother in giving him a walk as a member of the church. They mess it up. And you are saying to me that we do not patronize ourselves. No, I'm not going to patronize you because you carry the tag of a life embassy protocol and usher. I'm going to patronize you because you are skillful in what you do. 
excellence. So manpower is your initial capital. When Paul discovered that Saul of Tarsus was called by God, the first thing he did was that he submitted himself to the apostles in Jerusalem and learned from them the doctrines of the apostles before he launched out into ministry. He learned from them. Don't forget, this was Paul who at the age of 14 was already a lawyer under Gamaliel law. He graduated from Gamaliel school as a lawyer at the age of 14. He was already a Sadducee, a Pharisee at that age. Again, he knew the law. He knew everything. He could speak Galatian. He could speak Hebrew. He could speak Rome, Italy. He could speak many languages. He was a doctor at that level. But when God called him, he said, no, this is not my terrain. I'm not used to this. He submitted himself and he learned from the feet of the apostles. He submitted himself to mentorship. Develop your mental capacity. People will pay price for anything to have you. Develop yourself. Develop self-development. Seek to develop yourself. This was not how I started preaching. This was not how I started my ministry. But I've discovered over a period of time that I've worked on myself and I'm still working on myself to become a better preacher. You need to understand that the dynamics of progress suggests and demands demands from you self-development. Don't sit down and become the accountant of yesteryear. Refresh. Go and learn something new. If you're into fashion designing, especially uh, hairdressing, you discover that if the, nothing evolves like hairdressing. New wigs are coming. New nails, new everything are coming. But the only thing you know is how to breed. That's what you learned. You are out of market already. Even breeding already has new style. So man power. Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 15. The labor of the fools wearies them. For they do not know how to go to the city. The labor of the fools weary all of them. Because they do not know how to go to the city. In Daniel chapter 5 verse 11 and 12. It said there is a man. The mother of the king suggested to him. said there is a man in, the, in your kingdom. In whom the spirit of the holy God is. And in the days of your father, light and understanding and wisdom, like the wisdom of the gods were found in him. And King Nebuchadnezzar, your father, your father the king, made him chief of the magicians, astrologers, Chaldeans, and soothsayers. Now look at verse 12. Inasmuch as an excellent spirit, knowledge, knowledge, understanding. You see, plus the excellent spirit in you, you must add knowledge. You must have understanding. Interpreting of dreams. Solving riddles. And explaining enigmas. Were found in this Daniel. Whom the king named Belteshazzar. Now let Daniel be called. And they will give the interpretation. They will always send for you. They will always call for you. A relevant man. Will always be needed. Daniel, Daniel used spent four regimes. Retired four kings before he died. He retired four kings. Every king that came, whether it is PDP that comes on board, they will call him. Whether it is APC, they will call him. He is always relevant. You tell them, if you want your kingdom to reign, call for this man. Forget he's a party man. But he worked with PDP the other time. No, that's not Oga. They will mess you up for that place. So if you don't call for that move. In which area are you developing yourself? In which area are you working on yourself? Developing your skill that any time they think of a problem in that area, your name comes to mind. Your name comes to mind. If you ask Sinach to come and do praise worship, if you are thinking of praise worship, hot praise worship, I'm sure you won't think of Sinach. Be thinking of Shama Jesus, you be thinking of, but when you are talking about worship, embodied worship, palpable presence of God that worship can bring, there's a name that comes to your mind globally. 
Are you get from saying? If they are talking about the best fish, croaker fish, they should think of you if a fish seller. You know, I eat kekefia, but I don't eat everywhere. Kekefia everywhere. There's a particular woman that any time I said I want to eat kekefia, they go. To, they know where I'm talking about. They go to that place and get it for me. If it is not from her, I won't eat it. Because she knows how to spice the fish in a way that I like it. That she knows how to spice it that even to the inner part of the fish, you will feel the spice. But there are some fishes you buy and boil it. fear that once you peel the first layer, every other time it turns to ordinary. They will give you sauce and water. It will be like Moses at the Red Sea. Water will go to this part. Pepper will go to this part. Then oil will become the dry land. <laughs> no skill. No sk As a housewife, be skillful in your food. Be skillful in the way you present food. I know so many of my sons who don't eat outside. If they are hungry, they will only take fruit. Until they get home, they won't eat outside. You know, and I've been privileged to eat from there with them in their family. And I know the reason why they don't eat outside. They don't eat outside. I know the reason. But you, your husband, before he closed, he remember he's coming home. He order for, for food and eat. By the time he comes home, or the, your food is ready. It's okay. I'm fasting. <laughs> Praise God. Man power is your initial cap. Develop yourself. Tap your neighbor. Say, develop yourself. Work on yourself. Be master in what you are doing. Number four is social capital. Social capital. Many of you don't know that relationship is a capital. Many people don't know. Listen to me. If you value relationship, you will not need money to do so many things. Social capital. Social capital. Social capital. You know, the children of this world are very, very, very wise and cunning in their own way. And that is why you discover that the Igbos are very good in this. They understand the power of social capital. The Yorubas have a problem with this. I know. They don't like themselves. They will be the first to criticize themselves. Once they see you, they always see themselves as a threat. But the Igbos, when they are one or two in a place, they are formed association. Immediately. Umunna. Umunna say. Umwada. You are something. They have formed association. Now, 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 now. Give them two years, they have, they have their Igwe in Malaysia. <laughs> Odogu in China. All of a sudden, and you know what? Anytime one of them is doing something, they go, they, they move together. And they help themselves. Your relationship is a social capital. It's a capital. That is why friendship is by choice, not by force. That somebody is your childhood friend does not mean that it should be your relevant friend, your modern friend. What is the relevance of those friends around you? 
Now, if you belong to a cycle of friendship that you cannot secure immediate help from them when you need help, you don't have friends. You have parasites. Not by force. Belong to groups of people where they are interested in each other's progress. Look at the value and the power of friendship. Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 9 to 12. He said two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, one will lift up his companion. But woe to him who is alone. When he falls, for he has no one to help him up. Again, if two lie together, they will keep warm. But how can one be warm alone? Though one may be overpowered by another, two can withstand him. And a threefold cord is not quickly broken. Social capital is a capital you need in the days when your bank account cannot help you. Now, when we started this ministry, some unpalatable events occurred because of the effort of, uh, of uh, some people to stop us. Then one of those events was an arrest just to stop me from opening the coming to church on Sunday. I was arrested. While I was arrested, it was those in the, those days of Okada ride. So at Oluabaso there, my wife was outside the police station. She didn't know where to turn to. Then somebody, a son was on Okada and he turned, just saw my wife went to the police. Mommy, what happened? Pastor, they arrested him. He said, this is, ah, that is nonsense. Okay, let me call my brother. I'm talking about social capital. He called his brother. Brother was a retired commodore. Came straight to that police station and shattered all their lies and released me immediately. Do you know that the generator that is serving us for the past 10 years now, that man bought it for the church. New one. One day he came for my birthday. He said, "He said, Daddy, I don't know what to give you for your birthday, but what can I give you?" He said, "What do you need?" I said, "Whatever is in your mind." As at that time, we used some. Uh, Raja, he gave us some AC, two units, uh, two packet units, and we put it there. No, not powered. He said, "I see AC, but it's not being used. What can we do?" He said, we need generator. Then on Tuesday, he came back and took me to M. Saleh, paid 2 million cash and picked 50 kVA generator. That is social capital. It didn't cost the church anything more than relationship. Keep relationship. Everybody God brings your way has an assignment in your life. Be careful how you treat people. You see, I will... I, I may disagree with you, but I will never fight you. Be careful how you treat people. Even if you must walk away, try and close the door gently. Don't slam it. Because one day you may have to rush and knock on the same door. Be careful. A lot of people have lost mighty things, opportunities because they are careless with relationship. There are dreams that will not need money to kickstart. It will need friends. The Bible says in Abram they came men of renowned status, captains in their own rank. They came to David at Abram. They didn't need his money. They didn't need a sponsor. They didn't need any favor. They were already fulfilled. They were already captains in their own rank. These were people that came into his life with resources. And they came together. And pulled resources together. And said you will become our king. 
There are king makers that God will bring into your life. You need to be careful and you need to be sensitive to understand each man's assignment in your life. Some people are in your life today, they will look useless, but they are just there for a future purpose. Are you getting what I'm saying? And that is why not everybody that is not useful to you today cannot be useful later. Relationship. Relationship. If you lose relationship, you have lost money. You have lost everything. If you lose money, you can get it back. But if you lose certain relationship, you may, you may never get it back. That's why you have to be very careful. It is not, you see, the, the church most of the time gives too much credit to the devil. The devil does not have the power as much as we give him credit. It is our person, our selves that are limiters of ourselves. If you will take care of certain dynamics and understand certain functions and operations of the spirit and you work on yourself diligently to be a balanced Christian in the inner man, you will discover that the devil is not as powerful as you give him, give him credit. I said the only person that can stop you is the man in the mirror. When you get to the house, look at, look at the mirror. Any man you find there is the person who can stop you. If that person cannot stop you, you have conquered the world. You need to understand that. You need to understand that. You need to understand. It was the relationship David had in the palace. God connected him quickly to Jonathan. And the relationship he had with Jonathan was what saved him from his father, from, from King Saul. He didn't die. And when he became king, the Bible says in 1 Samuel chapter 11, he said, is there anyone left of the house of Saul that I may show him kindness for the sake of Jonathan? For the sake of Jonathan. For the sake of Jonathan. Always do good by everyone that comes around you. Keep your conscience clear with them. Whatever they now do is the, up, to the, up to them. But never have it in mind or behind a motive to hurt anybody in life. You are hurting yourself. You know, when we're growing up, we grew up with this, with this fairy tale story. A man and a woman who have been suffering and um, they have their son who went, who was taken by the colonial masters at a very tender age, traveled abroad, school and everything. So they have been suffering. So one day, the boy became mighty and became rich and came, traced his village back and came to the house and began to ask for, said he's on a journey. He never knew that he has got into his village in that night. Said he's on a journey to trace his parents that can he please stay with them for a night and then he stayed with them for a night and they saw that he came with a lot of money in his bag. Then they killed him to take the money. Only to wake up in the morning and somebody came and said, I came, I'm looking for somebody. That is your son. The person who just died now is your son. They killed their son because of the money. Don't lose friends because of money. Don't allow money stand between you and your friends. Money is the least thing that can cause a fight between me and somebody. I will walk away. Don't lose friends because of money. My people say, well, he that did something to you that pains you today can do something that, that will gain you tomorrow. Never lose relationship because of money. Take care of your relationship with people. Take care of your relationship with people. It's very key in life. Le relationship is a capital that you can use. There are people who started business with just relationship, not with money. Do you know Igbo guys? Igbo guys are very, very good at this. If you get to their shop, you know, what they do is that, these guys that do OCI, what do you call it? OCI. Now, they don't have a shop, but they have a relationship with those who have shops. No matter what you want to buy in Nikoku, they will say they have. They have. They have. It's in the parking store. It's in the parking store. He knows where to go. So, what he's leveraging on is eating from relationship, not from shop. He doesn't have a shop, but he has a relationship. And most of the time, these Osaya guys makes more money than the real shop owners. Are you getting what I'm saying? They leverage on relationship. 
Who do you know determines what knows you later? Who do you know in life? Do you know? Who do you know? And that's why, you know my principle, my principle in life, very simple. The Holy Ghost sat me down one day and said, have pure conscience. It takes conscience to deal with humanity. It takes faith to relate with divinity. He said, your, with your faith, you relate with divinity. But with your conscience, you relate with humanity. Have good conscience towards people. Have good conscience towards others. Never have a motive to hurt anybody in life. Because you might be hurting your angel. I'm telling you, have good conscience. If people judge you wrongly, that is their problem. But let your conscience be pure. God, is, Abimelech said to Abraham, in, he said to God, when God went to him and said, if you touch that woman, the wife of Abraham, you are a dead man. And Abimelech said to God, will you also kill a man who is innocent? In the integrity of my heart, I did this. In the integrity of my heart. Integrity of my heart. Sometimes, the people you meant well for may misinterpret your intention. That is not important. I am not coordinated or governed by your own motives or opinion about me. Once I check my conscience with you and I know it's right, I leave you to God. You need good conscience to have good relationship. When people lose people that values them, that respect them, that loves them genuinely, when they walk out of that relationship, they will never find any genuine one again. Be the man people will regret ever losing. Be the man, the woman people will, friends will regret ever living, ever misinterpreting. I remember when I left my former place because of a lot of lies against me and stuff like that. And because of the mandate, my pastor didn't want to pick my call. But every year I would, I would call him. My pastor didn't want to talk to me. But every year I would call him. I was calling him and calling him even though I had the right to be angry. But I was not angry. I was not angry. And I said to so when we eventually made up, ask my wife. Some of you went with me to Ibadan. He said it to a 5,000 seater congregation. He said about Debo, my regret is that I was misinformed about you. So I later discovered that everything said about you was wrong. But I thank God that God has justified you today. You see, cherish relationship. I, I, I am not only loyal to the people ahead of me. I am loyal to you. I am loyal to friends. Loyalty is key to maintain relationship. So my, I, I said to people, I said, you don't demand loyalty from your followers only. Loyalty is a two-way traffic. It's a what? Two-way traffic. There are some of us who believe that loyalty only comes you come from the people that we are over and above. But you have to be loyal back to that person. You have to be loyal back to that person. Even though that person is your staff, that person is your subject, you, he demands loyalty from you. Hear this. Hear this. No matter what anybody say about you, I will defend you with my life. And I've proven that again and again. When people come from outside to report my members to me, the first assignment I have is to shield them. That's me. So there's nothing anybody can say about you <laughs> that can change my opinion about you. It, I have proven that again and again and again. To also understand that there are, there are some parts of the lives of your members that they don't want you to intervene. 
Don't overstretch your dominance or authority by trying to be the Lord everywhere and tell, I'm using your position arbitrarily to tell them I command you to do this. Who are you? So, you must understand the science of relationship. You must understand the technology of connectivity. It's important. It's important if you are going to succeed in life. It's important. Don't just throw away everybody. Don't just walk away because of what people said about somebody. Don't close the door. Don't change your opinion until people have proven themselves. Always give people. I used to tell my wife, I said, if I trust you, I will not believe what people say about you. And the only time you will hurt me is when I trust you and you betray it and it will be once. I will judge you based on what you do to me, not on what I hear about you. Are you getting what I'm saying? So I, I like you to understand the metrics of relationship. We are interconnected. There are so many things you think you need money to do. You don't actually need money to do them. You need a man. You need a connection. And they beckon onto their, onto their partners to help them when the boat was sinking. Who, would, who can you beckon to in the days when you are sinking? Social capital. I have been a privileged beneficiary of social capitals. Most of the things I've enjoyed in life comes through relationships. So you need to understand it very well. And that is why I take time to study people. I don't seek to understand you by what people say about you. I seek to understand you by what we do together. And I don't give chance to third party. I am telling you today, if you review your... There are people you should leave this place and go and say sorry to. There are people you should leave this place and call them back again. Hit the humble pie and call them again. And reconnect back to them. They are relevant to where you are going. God doesn't make mistakes. Everybody along your way or he brings your way. They are relevant one way or the other. If they are not there to teach, to give you a blessing, they are there to teach you a lesson. A vital lesson that is required for you to survive the storm ahead. Pharaoh was a mentor to Moses who taught Moses how not to be a leader. So Moses for 40 years studied a course of how not to be a leader and Pharaoh was the lecturer. And that was why the Bible says Moses was the meekest of all men. The meekest of all. It's not quick to judge. He was so meek that it was God that said one day, I will fight for you, even if you will not fight. The meekest of all men. Praise the Lord. Number five, I will rush that one, then we go to what I want us to pray today. Credit capital. Credit. Your credit worthiness credit worthiness. <laughs> you know, in 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 1 to 7, the Bible talks about the story of the widow of the wife of the, of the widow of the son of the prophet who went to Elisha and said, my children, my sons are going to be taken by the creditors that my husband owed before he died. I want you to help me and Elijah said, what do you have in the house? He said, I have nothing but a small bottle of oil remaining. And Elijah said, that's enough. But that's not my, 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 my emphasis. In verse 3, then he said, go, borrow vessels from everywhere. You know, the word borrow, look up everybody. He said, go, borrow the vessels abroad of all thy neighbors. Borrow. So, listen to me. 
Assuming this woman does not have credit worthiness. That she has spoiled her integrity and character with a penchant to take money and not pay back. With a character to be dubious, the, the propensity or the, 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 pot, the, the ability of this woman to be dubious with, in business. When Elisha told her, it is not everything you use that you own. Some of them you have to borrow. Not every goose you see in an evil man's shop belongs to him. Some of them are kept there for him in trust to sell and bring, and bring the wholesale price and retain the profit. If this woman didn't have integrity, nobody will borrow her. Nobody will borrow her. But the Bible says she went and borrowed from all her neighbors. That means she was surrounded with people, number one, who were assets, not liabilities. Number two, she could go to them and say, can you give me one million there? Is there no problem? What do you need it for? If you go to them and say, can you give me two million there? I need to invest in one business. Is there no problem? Just send me your account. She could go to them and say, can you give me five million there? It's no problem. Just send me your account. Uh, I'll give it to you in the next three weeks and that three weeks will not miss. If you lose integrity, you have lost everything. Better to lose money than to lose integrity. Credit worthiness. Are you credit worthy? Are you, can they give you money and expect it back at the time you promised? Are you credit worthy and the story will not overtake it? Uh, my, my, I don't know what is happening to me. Uh, my account, the bank, I'm having a problem with them. It is when you, are, when you wanted to take the credit, your bank didn't have a problem. You know, there are, how many of you are here? There are people that you can never borrow money again. You can never joke with your money with them. Continue the way you are behaving. You will soon be out of business. Before they, you hold them, they call you, you big ones. Now, they will call you with man to run about their phone. Anoint the phone and tie man to around it and stand on the prayer mat. As I call this guy, Nedusia, Father, compel him. You become a prayer project. A metal and go, 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 They begin to engage spiritual means to call you. Because it's that time network. And if they call you and you mistakenly call you with a strange number and you hear the voice, Network, eh? eh? Hello? Hello? Network! <laughs> Some of you say, I'm praying, I'm praying, I'm praying. I'll get, I'll get you back. I'll call, I'll call you back. I'm praying. No, stop praying. Pay me my money. <laughs> Praise God. Are you blessed tonight? Number six is equity capital. Invest in assets, not in liability. Car is a liability from the day you drove it out of, out of the garage where you bought it, the value has dropped. Whatever you cannot resell. So buy the things that you can resell anytime you need to invest. Buy the things you can resell. Anytime you need to invest, buy value, don't buy liability. Equity capital. So, when you see people who are real investors, they invest in the things. There are people who like to invest in gold, they just buy the gold and keep it. When they have, they, they can use it, be using it. 
when they have anything, any emergency money, they just go and do what? And liquidate it. Liquidate it. Buy land and keep it. If you don't know what to do with that money, buy land and keep it. Put it in fixed deposit. The day you will need it, you will have to call for it. Just go and call it. Buy bonds. Bonds that you can sell. Stop investing in clothes, in this, in that, in that, in that, in that. Stop investing in frivolities. Poor people do a lot to be noticed. When you see rich people, they do little to be noticed. They don't even like to be noticed. You are doing too much to express what is so little about you. It's like opening a shop and having few clothes, but having a very big billboard and running jingle all over Portacot. Then when they come to your shop, <laughs> they say, where is the clothes? <laughs> so when you wear big and expensive clothes just because you want to measure up you want to find out where Reverend Grace Man buys his suit unfortunately for you I don't even buy a suit again <laughs> but you, I forgot there was a time I used to call a malam in this town there was this malam that used to go to buy Okrika and as he's coming with that bail he will call me so I will call him to my office. We lock every window, every door. <laughs> and I'll be testing it. To be test One that was testing cockroach. Shut. <laughs> Are you getting what I'm saying? One day I bought one. As I was dancing on the altar, he thrust up. You're forgotten. Now, don't be interested in the glory of a man until you have found out his story. Find out. Find out. Find out. Don't invest in liabilities. Don't buy the latest shoe because that is what everybody's buying. You want to measure up with who? That shoe that you want to buy, I can tell you that for very sure that in the next two months, another one will come out. Now will come out. You buy, go and buy phone that is even smarter than you. Just because. And the only thing, how can you own iPhone and the only thing you do with it is snap selfie as if you have polio. You know? As if they have polio. Somebody saw, collected those pictures one day. I said, <laughs> I wrote on Facebook, he said, oh, uh, let's pray, oh, polio, don't come back Nigeria. <laughs> you have an iPhone. What do you need it for? You don't need it. Just because you want for status. Status. I buy phone because of what I do with them, not because I want to show off. You know, before I began to use an, a, a pouch that reveals my phone, how many of you observe that I don't, I don't like using pouches that reveals the identity of my phone? I don't like using it. I buy pouches that covers the identity of my phone. When I bought an iPhone, many people did not know in this job that it was an iPhone. Rajaya, I remember, was asking me one day, Daddy, where did you get this kind of phone? I said, it's a China, China phone. And they just bought, sent it, and said, well, some of us should test it, whether it is working. <laughs> he didn't know it was an iPhone, because I covered the identity. He said, it was status. Yes. Because I know what I do with it. When you receive success by it, it is with that phone. I record it with that phone. And you see the clarity. You see, so you need to understand that buy for purpose, not for posing. Buy for purpose, not for posing.
Hallelujah. I've been blessed tonight.